Right now, the history of the Earth takes us back millions of years, but not to hot forests and jungles, but to cold, unfriendly territory, home to a variety of bloodthirsty monsters. This is Alaska, 69 million years ago. The climate was the same as in today's northern countries. Summer temperatures reached 30 degrees Celsius. In the winter, up to minus 10. A real winter with drifts and ice, but much warmer than our modern one. It would seem impossible. Dinosaurs among the snow and ice. But it really was. Despite the inhospitable conditions, Cretaceous Alaska was quite a lovely place, where a variety of animals roam under the canopy of coniferous broadleaf forests, consisting mostly of its closest relative, the metasequoia and swamp cypress. And here were the first inhabitants. 5 meters horned Pachyrhinosaurus. They were great neighbors with a duck-built Edmontosaurus, which was the size of real bus. And here's the first winter raptor, a 6 meter long Nanocosaurus, a smaller copy of Tyrannosaurus. It's much smaller than a Tyrannosaurus, but it no less bloodthirsty. On the contrary, it keeps a keen eye on what's going on in its territory. And if any inattentive animal crosses Nanocosaurus territory, it has signed its own death warrant. Those inattentive animals were a herd of Pachyrannosaurus. The herbivores were preoccupied with finding food in a small forest. A pack of three Nanocosaurus had already smelled the animals had already smelled the animals and had already started chasing the Pachyrannosaurus. And this was not just a trivial pursuit, but a well-designed strategy. The forest is a real trap for herbivores. Some Pachyrannosaurus could easily fend off the herd and be killed by a predator. That's why the herd sensing predators hares out of the forest and into the open countryside. Once out of the forest, Pachyrannosaurus form a circle and lower their heads, exposing their huge, deadly horns to predators. But the Nanocosaurus is not frightened by this at all, and one of them, more daring even thoughtlessly, tries to attack the herbivores, but is rebuffed, fortunately for him not fatal, and runs away to a safe distance. Such confrontations could last for several days, including due to a heavy snowstorm that interfere with both predator and herbivores. The Nanocosaurus periodically tested the Pachyrannosaurus herd for vigilance, but the predators waited until the herd broke formation and panic set in. The herd fled in pursuit of the predators. Eventually, one Pachyrannosaurus was exhausted and fell behind. The Nanocosaurus instantly surrounded it. After a brief confrontation, the herbivore was defeated. And these are the dromaeosaurs, small predators about 2 meters long with a tail and weighing 15 kilograms. They had many sharp teeth as well as large sickle-shaped claws on their paws. The body of the dromaeosaurs was covered with feathers kept this animal warm because dromaeosaurs was warm-blooded. The predator was constantly on the lookout for prey on its hunting grounds. These amazing and dangerous creatures were not even squeamish about insects, but when they needed a really big prey on the hunt went out three or four because it was impossible to cope with a large animal alone. A large herd of herbivores appeared on the path of the Dranosaurus. Hadrosaurus are in the duck-billed lizard family. They are giants compared to the Dramosaurs, but agility and surprise are on the side of the predators. The only way to save the Hadrosaurs is through teamwork. 
in the way of the herbivores, a large river is covered with ice. The leaders begin to choose the safest place to cross. The hare carefully crosses the ice, which in some places is very thin. Dromaeosaurs keep a close eye on the herbivores. They have no intention of attacking the adults. They are after the cubs. The herd sees the predators and starts to panic. As a result, some of the hadrosaurs cubs end up drowning in the river. Finally, the hadrosaurs crossed the dangerous river and rushed to safety. The dromaeosaurs were unable to pursue them any further. The hunt was unsuccessful, but dinner was provided for them tonight. Because the river nailed a drowned young hadrosaurs to the shore. The most unusual polar dinosaurs is the 7 meter long Antarctic Crylophosaurus. This predator hunted rather large plant eating sauropods but did not disdain small prey. The only skeleton found has teeth of a triptalodont, a small mammalian relative. To catch up with such prey, Crylophosaurus had to be agile and slender, but there were times when these predators were faced with the question of survival. Often, one of the competitors would die fighting for a female and to avoid throwing food away, Crylophosaurus would cannibalize its prey. There have also been instances of eating a male in a serious unsuccessful hunt. The predator became hungry and didn't care what it ate. Another polar resident, Triaden. Triaden was a small dinosaur, reaching up 2.5 meters in length and up to 50 kilograms in weight. Of course, it did not look as fearsome as Tyrannosaurus, but the fossils suggest that Triadens was as ruthless hunters as Tyrex. This small predator struck down a herd of Edmontosaurus and are about to hunt them down. At first glance, the adult Edmontosaurus seems to have little to fear. A 12-meter herbivore versus a 2-meter predator. Giants versus pygmies. But it's not that simple. First of all, the Arctic triadents were different in size from the southern counterparts. Secondly, they were nocturnal predators and herbivores slept at night. And third, triadents had a larger brain-to-body ratio than any other dinosaurs which means it was more intellectually advanced. Also, these predators had incredibly large eyes. They could hunt at night as well as during the day. Among the entire herd of herbivores, Triadens tried to choose the youngest or weakest prey. And so, the lightning attack on the sleeping herd of Edmontosaurus began. The herbivores were taken by surprise, and then one cub made a dangerous mistake. It broke away from the herd and ran in the opposite direction. The triadents followed him. The cub did not have the strength to run far, and the triadents attacked him. There was only an animal appetite in their eyes. Help came unexpectedly. A maternal instinct kicked in. The adult female Edmontosaurus appeared in front of the triadents unexpectedly. With a swipe of her tail, she fatally winded one of the raptors. The other two triadents managed to escape. Excavations of ancient fossils show that the triadent thrived in this area, feeding on herbivore of spring and dead animals. Like most predators, they were also scavengers. In the area of the coastal marine bay of the Golden Ridge in the late Mesozoic, there were representatives of lamb sharks, sandy heads, flat heads and carpet sharks, whole-headed chimeras and very large rays, all kinds of cretaceans, gastropods and ammonites. Quite often large specimens of mosasaurs enter such seas. Caniferous species of trees grew along the shores of the sea basin, occupying the mountain ridges and the nearest lowlands. In the end of the Jurassic period, there was probably a vast sea of plesiosaurs. 
Tylosaurus also liked the northern parts of our land. There was more than enough food for the him. Underwater pursuit of prey did not stop day or night. The abundant diversity of fish in these places made a big step of the migratory processes of predators and also in their evolution. In the late Cretaceous, terrestrial dinosaurs thrived in Chukotka. Recently herbivorous dinosaurs Hatrosaurus, were found in the area of eastern Chukotka. However, the species identity of these reptiles is still in question. At the time, Chukotka was a paradise for herbivorous dinosaurs. Most of Chukotka was covered with dense coniferous broadleaf forests. Fern, cicadas, gymnospens and flowering plants grew here. It is the facial flora that allows us to understand what the hadrosaurs that lived in these areas ate. They lived here very well and came to this area a result of migrations. The bone fragments have not yet been fully studied, but it is already clear now that these reptiles lived here in conditions and polar night and mild polar winter. They were truly arctic dinosaurs. Thank you all for watching this issue to the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave air comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And also click on the bell to be the first to see new and interesting issues from the channel Real and Real.